Hey Rich, so we are going to do our first time lapse assembly here in Adobe Photoshop. And again, Photoshop is just a tool that's kind of ubiquitous. Everybody has access it to, you know, through their Creative Cloud, yeah. their Creative Cloud member. And it's just one of those things that, in my experience anyway, every video editor at some point in time touches Photoshop. It's pretty easy to do, and a lot of folks don't realize that since Photoshop CS6, which was the previous version before Creative Cloud, mm -hmm. it's had the ability to work with video. Now, some people had to used to buy like an advanced version for that, but there's no longer a, a line in the sand. Just one product, right? Every Photoshop can work with video or can create video. So, so let's do that. Okay. We're going to start here by making a new document. Okay. File new, and a lot of people. Don't ever click this menu. Yeah. Presets. <laughs> no, this is something really cool. Film. This has been around, obviously, in Photoshop for a long time. Yeah. Um, and Adobe's done some good work here. So I'll choose film and video, and then under the size, you'll see a lot of common sizes like um, ten, you know, 1080, 720, or let's do this at a 1080p size because that way we have a you know a pretty good size that we can yeah. down downsample if we need to. But this is good. And don't be bothered that the frame rate's at 29.97. Right. Once we click OK, we get a new document. Yep. Bring up the timeline panel. Yep. And this is something that's obviously going to give us the ability to uh, see a t video timeline, yeah. just like you would in, say, Premiere or Final Cut, whatever. So all we need to do here is click on Create New Video Timeline. Yep. And then over here in the panel menu, which is the little triangle on the right, yep. you could choose the timeline frame rate. Yep. And we'll go with 23.976 for like web it. delivery. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, Rich, so we got our new timeline set up here in Photoshop. Next yep. stop, I'm guessing, is to bring in the files. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You just say layer, mm -hmm. video layer, new layer from file. Okay. And you point it at the folder, and you just basically grab the first shot. And as long as this sees a consecutive series of images, mm -hmm. when you hit open, it'll basically import that. Thanks for a second, and it builds a video file on all those frames. Okay, so I'm seeing that, but I, I'm, hold on, something's confusing me here, Rich. I mm -hmm. don't recall us doing the time lapse of a close up of the tree. I thought we had the field and the sky and all that. What's, what's going on here? The GoPro sensor shoots a higher res still than our video format. Ah, so we have a 1080 frame size in our timeline here, but the original imagery was bigger. Yeah, almost double that. Okay, so, so I probably want to transform it. Easiest way to do that is to make this a smart object. So you right click and you convert to a smart object and it makes it like a group. Right, and so a smart object is actually pretty cool for a couple reasons, right? First yeah. is that it sort of allows you to do things non-destructively, like transforms. If you made a mistake, you could always go back, transform it differently, and you're fine. If you didn't make it a smart object before you transform, you're kind of baking that in and stretching pixels around. But the real cool part about it that I like is for filters. Yeah, they apply to all the frames yeah. at once, and they're non-destructive, which is cool. Okay. So I just, after making a smart object, hit Command or Control T for right. free transform, right. and then Command or Control Zero to zoom out. Okay. And now we'll just hold down the shift key and drag to sort of scale that. Now, again, because the aspect ratio of the GoPro is different from our 16 by 9 aspect yeah. here on this, uh, this timeline, you're going to have to make some creative choice to get it to fit right. And the, yeah, because the GoPro is actually more of a square aspect right. ratio. Right. And I could see my horizon line's a little bit off, so let's just drag down a guide. Mm -hmm. And still using free transform here, we can do Command T and basically rotate that a little bit. Now you got a little gap on the left side there as well. There you go, okay. And it's good, right? Yep, looks good. So there's our shot, and at this point, you could do things like change its speed. So if you didn't want it to be 24 frames a second, mm -hmm. you could basically click the little triangle here, and this lets you sort of see what's going on. Now, you'd have to step inside the video file, right. and basically inside of there, you can click the triangle, and click right here, and it says, oh, I could change the speed. So sure. if you wanted to slow it down, you could. Uh, you just have to step in. I would do that usually before I did the transformation. Absolutely, and you could do other things, like you could add some filters. Now, just keep in mind yeah. that filters per se, not every filter in Photoshop is gonna work on a smart object, right? Most will, but yeah, I, I added an adjustment layer, which mm -hmm. worked great just to do a little curves adjustment. Mm -hmm. Maybe we wanna toss on a LUT. Yeah, maybe we developed a look inside of uh, Adobe SpeedGrade and we wanna apply it here. Yeah, and they even have presets for things like Kodak and Fuji film stocks. Mm -hmm. And let's say we're happy with that and it's quote, good. Well, when you hit the space bar in Photoshop, it's not going to be a very real-time experience because it's chung, cha -chung, cha -chung. Cha -chung. yes, it's playing well, like one frame a second. Right, right. So you just say file, export, render video. Yep. And at this point, it's actually pretty professional. Uh, you tell it where, okay. which is easy enough. Sure. So let's just target a folder there. 
we'll go to our drive, and I got a time lapse folder. We'll make one called renders. There we go. And then you tell it a format. Okay. Go with Adobe Media Encoder unless you want an image sequence. Right, and you might choose an image sequence if you're doing something like bringing it into Adobe SpeedGrade or DaVinci Resolve, where you don't want to have to deal with codecs and all that kind of stuff. Most yeah. of those apps can read TIFF sequences, things of that nature. But if you're passing it off to an editorial app or something like that, using Media Encoder to create a file is probably your best bet. And I find that usually JPEG 2000 high or uncompressed works pretty well. Animation's ridiculously large. Yeah, just keep in mind with the JPEG 2000, and that's really uh, a newer compression scheme. It's used for things like like uh, DCP packages, digital cinema packages for film delivery, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's going to be like animation in the old days. Remember when anybody couldn't play back animation because it was yeah. so high bandwidth? The uncompressed actually is going to be a little easier on your computer, even though it's going to give you bigger file sizes. Um, I don't know how a whole lot of things can play back JPEG 2000 perfectly smooth, so uncompressed is a good shot. Yep, and pretty straightforward. It's There's our frame rate. Make sure you choose it or choose the mm -hmm. correct one. Yep. And it's progressive, square pixels. Everything looks good there. Yeah, and there's no alpha channel, so it's all good. I just click render. And it runs. By the way, you did make the cardinal mistake of saving something. You left it as untitled. But we can fix that. Nah. <laughs> I like untitled. It makes me feel like there's a sense of yearning. <laughs> Speaking of a sense of yearning, when we come back, we're going to take a look at a NLE workflow yep. using Adobe Premiere Pro. There's two ways of doing it in Premiere, and it's the same with most other editing apps. We're going to show you both ways to approach it with a nonlinear editor.